A big time severe weather outbreak is expected here on Saturday or for tomorrow where all hazards including tornadoes, large hail and damaging winds will be a concern with the possibility for significant tornadic activity potential of tornadoes being EF2 or greater uh, as well as damaging winds in the realm of 60 to 70 miles an hour and hail between 1 and 2 inches in diameter. My name is Andrew Heishman and in today's video we'll be discussing the overall impacts here with this upcoming storm system in regards to what we can expect here with it. Also the timing on the storm when we can expect it for some of the areas now guys before we go ahead and get on into it if y'all could leave a like hit that subscribe button be greatly appreciated and without further ado let's go ahead and jump on into it so the first thing we're looking at here is the current radar across the country and i want you guys to notice something if you look out here in the west in the pacific southwest we have been seeing a lot of moisture there's a lot of flooding that's been ongoing yesterday across southern california so this is actually going to be the storm system that does cause all that nastiness across portions here of the south now if we go ahead and overlay the wrap analysis here we take a look at the jet stream across the middle atmosphere you guys can kind of see a little trough here a little dip in the jet stream which is already showing us that the storm system is already starting to organize now over the next day here for today uh, the storm system will continue to work its way here to the east and once we approach saturday or the big day for severe weather as the storm system kicks its way off across the southern plains it'll start to pull up a lot of moisture here from the Gulf, which will get things started. And around this time, because of all of this warm air pulling up north from the Gulf, on the opposite end, there's going to be a lot of cooler air that's going to be pulling down from up north. So basically, we're getting this big mixing mess of warm air pulling up, cold air coming down, and the collisions basically creates this cold front that we are going to be seeing, which will be a long line of storms that kicks off. Once again, tornadoes, large hail, damaging winds will be a concern. So let's go ahead and hop over here to the storm prediction center and take a look at the current active risk from the NWS. Alrighty, everybody, so hop on over here into the outlook here from the Storm Prediction Center here for Saturday's threat. We do have ourselves a large area here where severe weather is going to be possible. So as you guys can notice, we have four different colors here. We have the light green, the dark green, the yellow, and the orange. The light green represents the possibility for thunderstorms, but not necessarily severe ones. So if you guys are across the light green for Saturday, you're looking okay. But there could still be a few booms and thunder. So keep an eye out there for that. However, the areas here in the dark green, the yellow, and the orange do represent risk levels here regarding severe weather possibility. Now, the probability of seeing severe weather in general between hail, tornadoes, and damaging winds uh, across the orange or the level three enhanced risk is a 30% chance here of seeing severe weather, a 15% chance here across the yellow or the slight risk, and a 5% chance across the green or the marginal risk here overall. Now, regarding the probability here for tornadic activity, we do have ourselves a 10% chance across areas here of northeastern Louisiana, southeastern Arkansas, and western portions of Mississippi. This is where the greatest tornado threat is going to be. And you might have noticed that we do have these black dash lines across the region here, indicating that there is a significant tornado threat or the potential that some of those storms could perhaps be EF2 or greater. So that's something that we really need to look out for as strong tornadoes will be possible across the area here of Yellow. Now, across the 2 and the 5% chance areas here, it's just different probability. However, most of the tornadoes that do happen across the regions here in the brown and the green could be relatively weak, relatively brief. Um, so once again, the greatest potential for tornadic activity regarding both probability and potentially the strongest ones will likely be across the areas here in the yellow. But regardless, once again, 2% chance for tornadoes across the dark green, 5% chance here across the brown, and a 10% chance across the yellow. All of those areas here do have the possibility for tornadic activity as high north up there towards Kentucky and as far down south as the Gulf Coast. Okay, so moving on over here into the wind threat as actually I do think that this event will be mostly a wind threat, a wind concern, potentially some damaging wind gusts ranging between 60 and 70 miles an hour overall. So across the yellow or that enhanced risk, that level three threat, we have an overall 30% chance of seeing damaging winds within a 25 mile radius of your location if you are in the red. So that's a 30% chance for damaging winds between 60 and 70 miles an hour on those storms potentially. So we do need to look out there for that as damaging winds will be a concern. Across the yellow or the slight risk area here, that's a 15% chance here for damaging winds of the same magnitude between 60 and 70 miles an hour. And same thing for the brown areas here or the 5% chance in the marginal where we do have ourselves once again a 60 
to 70 mile per hour wind gust possibility with those storms that do roll through. Now, lastly, we do have ourselves also a hail threat here as well. We have a 15% chance here for hail. The greatest probability for hail uh, will be across areas here of southern Arkansas, uh, northwestern Mississippi, northern Louisiana, and a little sliver of eastern Texas, where we could see some hail between one and two inches in diameter across those regions here as well. And of course, we do have the 5% chance or the lower probability here for hail. But once again, all hazards are on the table here regarding tornadoes, damaging winds, and large hail. So make sure you guys across the region here are being actively weather aware. Now, when can we expect all of this mess to occur? Alrighty, so taking a look here at the future radar regarding the HRRR model here for when we can expect all this nastiness to start to occur. So we work our way down in time here. Not really much happens here for today or for Friday. Not a really a lot. Maybe a little bit of showers and storms late today. Really not a lot of anything going on. However, once we approach our way here into pretty much really the early uh, morning here going into the afternoon here of Saturday we will start to see maybe some showers and some storms firing off here but as we approach our way here into the evening is when we're going to get this long line of storms that really kicks off here uh, once again this is going to be mostly a wind threat following tornadoes and of course some hail will be involved as well so some tornadoes could be embedded into this line of storms now the problem with this first of all being is that around this time uh, for the evening it's going to be nighttime so this is going to be a nocturnal threat for severe weather and tornadoes, so you're not going to really be able to see it. Uh, another thing which also adds to it is the fact that some of these tornadoes are, you know, could be what we call rain-wrapped, which means that inside of the long line of storms, there is heavy precipitation that's in it, which could allow for curtains of rain to wrap around these tornadoes, making it literally impossible to see. So not only is it nighttime, but we do have the possibility for those rain-wrapped tornadoes to occur. So... This is for the evening here of Saturday. Now we work our way over here into the morning of Sunday. The line will continue to sweep its way through. So this threat will be persisting here from late Saturday going into early Sunday. So we do need to be actively weather aware for once again both late Saturday and going into early Sunday. So we will definitely be live for the later portions here of this event here. I do plan on covering the night shift here. Um, so we will definitely keep you guys updated with everything. Okay, so we're going to take a look here at a different model. Model. Now, this is the NAM or the North American model here. So we're taking a look at the instability or the fuel that will be in the atmosphere here regarding these storms. So this is the fuel for the storms. Now, as we approach our way here into pretty much the afternoon here of Saturday, uh, at this point in time, we are going to be having that strong northerly advection. All of that warm moisture filled air and all of that warmth will be working its way from the Gulf, shooting its way up here into the southern United States. So that will be building in that instability as the cooler air will start to kind of pull its way down like we were talking about from up north and that will generate the instability uh, or those steep lapse rates which basically just tells you how much the temperature drops off with elevation so whenever it takes uh, whenever taking a look here at the models like the nam here uh, regarding the instability it seems like these models are kind of hinting towards maybe 500 to a thousand joules per kilogram of instability which really isn't a whole whole lot but it is definitely enough to get those storms going and definitely is enough to allow for severe weather to occur now one of the main things that i'm actually mostly concerned about in this event so we're going to go ahead and circle where the instability is here for pretty much the evening of saturday uh, overall, but t one of the main concerns here that I'm a little concerned about, obviously, is that how strong this lower level jet is going to be. So once again, we circled where that instability is, where that fuel for those storms is. But if we take a look at the lower level winds, we are talking really, really fast moving winds here, uh, right around 60 knot lower level jet or greater even, uh, potentially across some of the regions here of Arkansas and Louisiana. Now, the lower level winds is crucial to tornado development. It is a very, very important measure. Uh, it's a very, very important thing for tornadic development. So these strong winds will definitely be playing a factor in that. Now taking a look here at the middle atmospheric winds, you can kind of see that they're mostly moving in the same direction, maybe a slight uh, bit more to the northeast. Um, so there is a little bit of a veering wind shear uh, type of pattern going on here, which basically means that the winds are slightly changing direction um, with altitude, also increasing in wind speed as well as we do go up into the atmosphere, which will create the environment for potentially rotating thunderstorms that we call supercells in that line of storms that does kick off. So that is what we're looking out there for. Now, one last thing here is how how much moisture are we going to have? Now, 
If we go ahead and backtrack here a little bit um, to right around where we are now, you notice how these dew points here are relatively low in the 20s and 30s. But as we do get closer to the event here, you notice all of that moisture that starts to really work its way up here into the country. You, can, you guys can see all of that moisture working its way up here. And by the time we do approach Saturday, those dew points will be within the range of the 60s and maybe even near the 70s here for portions of Louisiana potentially. Uh, so those dew point values are going to be with in the Goldilocks zone here regarding uh, the moisture and whatnot. And also the temperature is going to be here in the probably in the 60s and 70s, which what that does represent here is that there is going to be a lot of water vapor present in the atmosphere, uh, considering that the temperature is fairly close to our dew points here, uh, which is lowering our dew point depression overall, basically just meaning that there is going to be a lot of moisture in the atmosphere here regarding those storms. So we have the moisture, we have the instability, and we have the wind shear, so we are definitely looking up for a decent severe weather event. We're thinking, like I said, mostly a long line of storms, I think, mostly capable for damaging winds and whatnot, but there will also be a threat for tornadoes in that line and potentially even some strong tornadoes as well that could be within the region. So make sure you guys are remaining weather aware. So there is another thing I do want to talk to you guys about here, and that is the active flooding threat here for Saturday. We have a whopping large moderate risk here for flooding all the way from northeastern Arkansas to western West Virginia here, where we have a large threat for flooding. So if you guys are across the red, uh, even the yellow here and even the green, this is a flooding threat here, but there is a serious flooding concern for Saturday, especially for the areas here in the, you know, the yellow and especially the red here uh, as we do have ourselves a really big threat for that. Um, so if you guys are in a low-lying area here in the region, make sure y'all are prepping accordingly uh, because flooding will be a big issue here overall. And if we take a look here back at the models here regarding the GFS to start things off here, uh, with that precipitation, you can see this large streak here of once again, uh, possibly between three and like five inches or so uh, of rainfall that could be possible for some of those regions. So once again, flooding will be a big concern. Uh, whenever taking a look at the euro, you can see that, you know, we're in relative decent agreement here. Uh, same potential accumulations between three and five inches with the streak that rolls through uh, some of the states like Tennessee and Kentucky. Although they are a little bit different, the GFS has it slightly a little bit more to the north here, but the overall idea is the same. Uh, the NAM here as well kind of agrees more with like the GFS as opposed to the Euro, which has it a little bit more for the south, but there will definitely be a lot of heavy rain across those regions, so flooding will be a big concern. So not only do we have the that flooding can you know not, not only do we have that flooding concern but also we have the threat for tornadoes large hail and damaging winds as well so saturday definitely going to be a very very active day here overall but all right everybody well that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video if you guys did enjoy it leave a like hit that subscribe button it'll be greatly appreciated if you guys would like to support what we do and help keep us afloat we do have our support areas down here if you guys wanted to check that out uh it'd be greatly appreciated everybody so once again thank you all for joining uh we'll be doing another video here or another live stream later today uh in order to help you guys out regarding you know more preparations and stuff like that here before the big day comes or for saturday so we'll make sure to keep you guys weather aware but already right, everybody thank you so much for joining once again on your way out leave a like hit that subscribe button be greatly appreciated and all right my friends we'll catch you guys in the next one peace out my friends see you later on